<laughs> awesome. Awesome. Hey, welcome to the Of Muse and Men podcast. I'm Darian. And I'm Andy. Thanks for joining us. And uh, we're going to talk about some current events and stuff that bugs us, the stuff that we think is funny. And hopefully you'll enjoy it and it'll be entertaining. Some politics, maybe, but nothing too heavy. Just, nothing too heavy. Just the keep comedy it of it. We exactly. try and keep it light. Have fun, like you said. Yeah, that's how we roll. That's how we do it. Because <laughs> ricks don't ride, they glide. That's right. <laughs> So let's get to some stories. You ready, Andy? I'm ready. What do we got? Um, wh- actually, why don't you start? You got a story for us, right? I think. <laughs> Dude, um, what is going on with a mom giving birth on a Philadelphia train and walking out with a baby still attached to the umbilical Randy, cord. Hey, do, and, and, <laughs> Andy, you sound like you're reading. Like, I am. You go, hey, dude, what is going on with the... <laughs> yes. hey, how about this? How about this? Syndrome. Hey, Andy. <laughs> what is going on with that lady having a baby on the train or something like that? What, I mean, that's Tuesday. that's probably not Tuesday. that... But that's probably not that unusual, but I don't understand why she didn't, like, she had the the kid had the umbilical cord still attached or something like that. Dude, I think it's pretty unusual to have a baby on a train. I, it's probably not <laughs> as unusual as we think, but the thing that's weird to me is any normal animal would chew through that thing. <laughs> any normal animal. Oh my god. You know what I mean? <laughs> totally. It's not normal to carry off your baby with a, like a cord still hanging. Still strapped to you. And and the thing I'm tripping out on is like if that happens, is a baby now like breathing through that cord you, and stuff like that? Is that well? You know, they're, you're supposed to clean out their mouth, like to get them to breathe and. Buy. Well, you tell me because you have the kid. Tell yeah. me all about it. It's pretty gross. I it's, can imagine. One of the most disturbing. I know you have to clean off like a lot of nasty blood and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, doctors did that. But this lady. Um, By the way, if we're offending a lot of women out there, we're sorry, but we're men. And to we're us, totally that's gross. Not sorry. That's why if we're in the birthing room with you. It's a miracle. It's it is a miracle. Yeah. So, but if your husband is in there with you, or your baby daddy <laughs> is in there with you, checking it out and hasn't passed out, you should you should be totally thankful and keep and him. He's keep really him he's really bit. supporting you hard because it's pretty gross. Totally. Um, to to read a little bit of the story. So What's it say? The unnamed mother and her unborn child were en route to a doctor's appointment when the infant decided to make his first appearance in the world. Uh oh. KYW TV reported after delivering a baby boy on a northbound SEPTA, uh, Pennsylvania Transportation Authority train, mom bundled her baby up in her clothes and approached an officer in only station, only, only station to tell him the good news. She said, This is my baby. I just had a baby. Uh, women's arms, a tiny baby. This I- is my other thing that I trip out on is what. Head is she, full she of having, hair, still attached to the umbilical cord. But I mean, did she have people helping? I mean, usually, that requires like a midwife at least, right? Well, in Africa, they like plop them out and get right in back. In all to over work. Asia too, I guess. Right. But but they have a totally different method. They do like a squatting birthing method, right, right. like a giraffe or some shit. Can you imagine if any American mom had to do that and that'd go be totally metal? I right think. back to picking strawberries yeah. or rice or, or something. whatever. No, they don't. I don't think. I think they have a little period of convalescence. But still, the thing that trips me out is like in a giraffe. I think the impact on the ground is what makes. That's like basically spanking the baby. Oh my god! It's pretty hardcore. Nature is brutal. Here brutal. is the weirdest part: the umbilical cord was still attached to the baby. That means that this lady still had the placenta inside of her still. Oh my God! Now you're really freaking me out, dude. I'm breaking out in a cold sweat. <laughs> Maybe it's a hot sweat. This weather's fucked. <laughs> um, but, dude, the placenta is the worst part of the bir- birthing process. It's like this purple, bluish, yeah, yeah, gnarly. But don't people bake that up now and eat it, dude? And they put it into pills. They have someone put it into pills. But no, um, they bake it into like I don't know, like yeah. a cake or something. That's been placenta going on cake. for for years. But <laughs> What's up with that, <laughs> dude? dude? I am not down with the placenta cake. Do you like cryogenically freeze it and then feed it to your kid later on? No, no the, the woman eats it. Dude, it's disgusting. But supposedly, it's maybe that could be a good business. You can just go. Oh you can probably God. get placentas for free from a hospital, right? Just cruise oh. around with a big ice chest. 
<laughs> or like maybe like an ice cream truck. Ice cream truck. Of. You buy a used ice cream truck and cruise around the hospitals <laughs> and say, I'll take those placentas off your <laughs> oh hand, please. Dude, I'm about to throw up right <laughs> and now. then you bake them all in the cakes and you muffins. You obviously don't have And a so kid. I'm the Starbucks. <laughs> It's supposed to help with postpartum depression, but no, I don't. I I heard that people think it's like healthy or like I don't know. Maybe they think to, it's spiritual, some kind of to eat your metaphysical. Isn't that like jumbo. eating your babies? The misfits no, it's like eating your that, baby's uh, environment. <laughs> environment. <laughs> Let's move on to the next story. Next story. Next story. <laughs> so, dude, did you hear about this this diaper thing in Seattle? Uh, I, he- I heard a little bit about it, but why don't you read it? Four hours ago, um, ABC News reports that a pregnant Seattle woman was kicked off a city bus when her baby's dirty diaper was deemed to be a disturbance to other passengers. Dude, it's a disturbance to me. Dude, I'm not even there, and it's disturbing. Can I read a little more? Um, she's questioning why normal baby behavior would lead her to be removed from city transportation. Any parent can tell you how stressful it is to travel with a baby. But Nicole... Blank says the problem she ran into this week when she boarded a city bus with her one-year-old took it to a whole new level. He had just pooped in his diaper as soon as I got on the bus. Um, So she's just sitting there just fermenting on the whole bus. baking on a stinky bus to begin with. (laughs) Well, I mean, okay, so you're a parent, so has anything anything like that happened to you? Uh, One time? Yeah. At stall number two. At the studio? Yeah, when he was just a real young baby. You smelled it before I did. Did I kick you out? You totally did. <laughs> That's you covered awesome. your nose with your shirt, and you're like, dude. Go to the lounge and do do your business. Handle this. That's awesome. There's definitely some gross things about being a parent. I mean, but I don't think this is that outrageous. To I mean, that is disturbing. It is, but, I mean, at the same time, what is she going to do? I mean, what? I guess she can get off and go into a McDonald's or something or a gas station and clean it up and get back on the bus i agree because that that is a tough scenario to be in because what if she's on her she's pregnant maybe she's going to a doctor's appointment she's going well, she's is anywhere she pregnant? She need, yeah she pregnant just has, and a baby. oh my god double whammy <laughs> double whammy so she you know she's got some raging farts dude yeah. oh <laughs> we'll leave that one <laughs> let that we'll, dog we'll let sleep. that slide but uh that's uh <laughs> that seems like a, that seems like quite a predicament for her. She's stuck on the bus, pregnant, with a kid that just dumped in his diaper. Yeah, filled it up. Um, I think it's just one of those moments that she has to kind of get over. I mean, obviously, no one wants to get kicked off the bus for something you can't handle, but get over it. I yeah. think. I mean. Dude, even with if I had seven kids with me, I wouldn't want to smell a baby's dirty ass day. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, What's the next story? Justin Timberlake marries Jessica Beale. <laughs> so, parenting one on one, how do you discipline your kid? Well, what do you do? I you're, spank you're, him. Oh, you do? If, yeah, if I I'm have totally to. down with spanking. I got spanked my whole life. I did too. Look how bad I turned out. I know. I mean, you even made it through college, and you got spanked. So, <laughs> well, yeah, I was getting away from the spanking. <laughs> but uh, what what did this person do? With with my kid, I just had to spank him a few times. Now I just have to ask him if he wants a tune up. Right. See, that's a, exactly like you it's give him just, three or four good ones. Exactly. You don't got to do it constantly. Right. Right. You so, don't overuse it. I mean, we're not espousing abuse. You right. Know? It's just uh, you put the fear of God in them. Yeah. And then they respect. <laughs> that's how it's always been. And that's old school. I mean, I don't want to be walked on by my kid. But this mom in uh, Alaska who, I, well, I mean, it's it's on the Internet, so sh- it must be true. Jessica Beagley was shown forcing hot sauce down her adopted son's <laughs> throat. Not oh even her own God. kid. <laughs> I thought you were going to say in the eyes and it would be Fletcher. Oh, my goodness. Then forcing him into a cold shower as punishment for lying. He's probably drinking the water when he's in the shower. Oh, my goodness. She had 10-year-old daughter tape her as part of an angry mom segment for Dr. Phil. After the pro- producers egged her on. Okay, see, look, I want to talk about Whoa. that for a second because this is where society goes wrong. Because now 
everybody is hating the mom, but at the same time, she gets glamorized and she's going to have like her a huge minutes. paycheck out of, yeah. of this. Yeah, five she's minutes of fame from Doctor Phil, who's a exactly. freaking joke, anyways. Exactly. So, and then she'll probably come out with a book, "How I Turned Around My Life." You know, yeah, these people was... are being rewarded for horrific behavior. She well, should go to jail. Well. Speaking of which, I mean, it says the producers egged her on. Um, right there. Those, those people should go to jail. They should. Um, after the segment aired, child abuse charges were brought against her, and she was ultimately convicted of child abuse. I think she should go to, chi- she should go to jail, um, convicted of child abuse, like you said, and then she should sue the producers, and they should have to donate money to child abuse charity. Definitely. And Not see, to her. She shouldn't right. get the money. So here's the other thing is she actually did a really good thing because... The well, hot sauce to thing? Be, no, to begin with. She adopted a kid. Like, that takes, yeah, I yeah, think, some courage. True. Totally. Um, because, I mean, along with the kid, you're getting all kinds of yeah, depends genetic on the, the ty- potential it, problems. Yeah, well, that right. aside, it, it depends on the, uh, the age of the kid. I mean, if right. you're if you're adopting... An older kid, I think that takes a lot more courage because Definitely. they probably have a lot of uh, issues, a lot I of mean, baggage that's that comes with right. that. So, I mean, anybody who takes that on, we have to give them some props. Definitely. And but, then, but the hot sauce thing kind of takes away the props. It, it does. I mean, whew, it's such a tough call because I got soap in my mouth when I was a kid. and I think everybody did. Yeah, but like... Baraxo powdered soap. Oh yeah, that's real bad, dude. No, I didn't get that. No, but that's just so <laughs> that's gnarly. <laughs> but hot imagine? sauce is gnarly, dude. What if it? I was wonder like, what brand of hot sauce. I was just <laughs> thinking. What if it's like sriracha? I or think it was. Like uh, Rick's Bo- I think it was Bobby Blotzer's Blot Sauce. I think that's what it was. <laughs> What's that commercial for that hot sauce where that old lady's uh, Rick's hot oh, sauce where she's like, "That's hot that. shit" or <laughs> something like. I never like, saw that, but there is this thing called dave's insanity sauce Have that's you ever tried that? that commercial i put like one drop of that on my tongue one time and i sweated for 20 minutes dude that i can't take super hot stuff i like i like hot stuff but i know it's real hot when my eyelids start sweating wow <laughs> that's pretty incredible <laughs> oh my goodness but my friend tony Sher, who loves hot sauce he says uh, it's just as hot coming out as it is going in. I don't know about that. But <laughs> oh, sting I'm ring? <laughs> I'm not in there. <laughs> okay, what's the next story? Um, I like this one. Girl brings dad's cocaine to school. How about this? Uh, let's see where this is at. Um, yeah, tell me where in Florida that happened. <laughs> where in Florida? Um, you know that saying, telling tales out of school? I don't get it. One 10-year-old girl shared her dad's business, his illegal business in school, by accidentally bringing in his Coke stash to show and tell. Uh, I think I heard about this, yeah. Is this this happened a while ago, right? Um, It uh, doesn't say here. He's not the fastest scanner, well, Andy. You know, I barely graduated high school. Yeah. In fairness to her, that, that's it was apparent. hidden in a gummy bear bag and looked to her like candy. What an powdered white candy. <laughs> well, I mean, she's 10. So, so what? So At 10, I knew what powdered white candy. Okay, that's not candy. You knew it. Oh, that's true. Yeah. I would know that's not candy. Yeah, but yeah, if, if it, especially. And, if it and was you know in what? You would think that any, any. Well, yeah, maybe she couldn't see it. But if you could see the powdered white candy, be careful with that microphone. <laughs> it's worth more than your car. Hey. Uh, hey you no. would think that any kid would go oh what is this let me taste it i wonder if she did that Ooh. but what happens when you taste coke your, your mouth, mouth gets goes totally numb or something i mean that's what i heard i wouldn't yeah. know anything about it i wouldn't never um so what happened with the kid i mean were they it busted it doesn't go on to say it just says um Oh, it's got to say something about what happened. That must have been an interesting parent-teacher conference. That's that's how that story <laughs> summed up, which that's awesome. I gotta agree. I would have to say that somehow the police got involved. I would, I would hope. Um, and you know what? If the dad is putting the coke in gummy bear packages, he is a total pile. Beyond. Sorry. Beyond. Sorry, dude. Why is he even bringing it into the house? Well, like, I mean, he's a 
I'm probably, you know, sitting up little bindles for people, but <laughs> buy a Ziploc baggie like everybody else. Right. Um, here's a, here's kind of a, a something semi-interesting. Eight discipline mistakes parents make. Telling big lies is number one. Uh, you have to elaborate on get it. Um, well, for example, my two-year-old daughter, Chloe, fights me about going to her babysitter's house every Monday. You're reading, right? You don't have a two-year-old daughter named mm-hmm. Chloe. Well, no, I don't. Okay, I'll um, have to slap you. <laughs> I might. I pointed out to the house next door and told her it was a daycare center run by the caveman from the Geico commercials. What? <laughs> <laughs> Which really scare her, says Ma. Uh, that, you know what? I, I kind of like that. I said she had a choice to go to the sitter's house or to the caveman's daycare. She picked the babysitter's house. You know, I, I kind of like that. I'm, I don't think that's parenting fail. I think it's just funny. I, I think it is because I and get... You know, the, the weird thing is that kids going to be terrified every time they see a Geico commercial. That's good. Yeah, they should be. Um, yeah, I think that brings something interesting, though. It's like, you know, sometimes you have to manipulate kids into getting them to do it. Absolutely. And here's my, okay, this is the problem. You as a parent must be smarter than your kid. Right. And if you allow your kid to use psychological warfare tactics on you, you should give up your kid to somebody with a brain. By far. Because especially when I see people who are outsmarted by a five-year-old, that is really sad. And And I routinely see that in Walmart and Kmart. Well... (laughs) <laughs> nothing against those stores but you know there's something the about people. a magnet for craziness that they got going Dude, on sci- or kfc psychosis i wouldn't know about that but i mean i'd, I'd be interested in going to kfc and like for a day with the camera and checking it out could you imagine oh man um see i don't i don't think i have a big problem about making up lies like that to your kid i mean are there any other good ones on there um there's let's see backing down you want a surefire to wake make sure your kids <laughs> never listen to you threaten but that, don't now act. okay that's what i always see i always see kids i always see parents back down from their threats yep. like the kid calls their bluff and that's what i say the kid is outsmarting them psychologically yeah. and they are ultimate parenting fail right there well i think you know, as a parent, you're called to, to be a leader and to be an example exactly. to your kid. And you know what's the lamest thing, women, is when you try to be <laughs> your kid's best buddy. Oh. It's not about that. You are supposed to be guiding them in life. And, and a lot of that becomes being a disciplinarian. Yep. And leave it up to dad. Dad always gets... Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, I'm going to tell your dad about this one. I mean, well, it's some in some respects, that can work. I mean, that's what worked when i was growing up that was always the deal but my mom was not afraid of being a gnarly disciplinary right (laughs) not at all and uh, if if you if you expect your kid to tell you and be honest with you and i mean how are you going to back down when you say i'm going to spank you if you do that again and the kid does it a hundred more times yeah, it's usually not even spank like when i go into walmart or whatever and i see that happening they go uh, we're leaving if you keep doing that. And then the kid keeps doing that and they don't leave. Mm-hmm. Or the kid throws a gnarlier tantrum yeah. because of that and the, and the mom tries to appease him. And it is a gnarly thing to get into when your kid is going totally haywire and the entire store is looking at you. But yeah. you just have to go, okay, we're out of here right now. Yeah. And just grab them and take them out of there because – Otherwise, that kid will go, oh, cool, I got the hot button now. Yep. I know what to press. And, you know, I think it, it it shows that the kid knows what they can get away with. Exactly. That's And kids are not as dumb as you think they are. They're really good at manipulating stuff. And that oh, yeah. that's what they're learning in life. Well, they learn it from day one. You cry, yep. somebody comes and picks you up. Exactly. So let me just cry all the time. And, and I really love it when kids do that when I'm on an airplane flight to Europe. Oh, it's my my. Favorite thing. I'm looking forward to my trip on Monday. I hope I, there's like 7,000 babies on the flight. Oh, there will be. Oh, my. Oh. And it'll be right behind you. Oh, and right next to me. Awesome. <laughs> and, but how do they kick her off if her baby poops? What are you doing with your kid? Um, he's staying Babysitter? with mom. Yeah, staying with oh, mom. That's school. awesome. 
He wants to go. I would be I stoked when I was, if I were a little kid and my dad was going to Hawaii and I couldn't go. Right? I'd be super stoked. But as a kid, his job is school. Yeah, I and know. He, and in and, and first grade, that's your job is to go to school. He did tell me he doesn't like school because they don't let him take naps. Which <laughs> is <kind> awesome. <laughs> funny because but don't they let you take naps in kindergarten? No. I thought he they used to. He didn't take naps last year. And on top of it, on days that he's not in school, he won't take a nap. So I don't really get what I think he's just trying to play that that card. But then he said, oh, well, I guess I could take a snoozer in the library. But I mean, lunch. wait a second. First grade, isn't he only in school from like eight to one or something like that? Thirty five until three oh two in the afternoon. Three oh two. Oh, okay. So he's on the big boy time. He's now. A, he is. So when when do the kids get out at like noon or something? Is that oh, that's kindergarten. kindergarten? Well, kindergarten now is like one fifty. That's yeah. what he went to last year. So I mean, I, just tell him, dude, you can stay awake from eight to three. Yeah, you can do it. Yeah, I, and then take a nap at three thirty. Yeah, you know the the interesting like thing you is, do. Well, three thirty is pushing it, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, he, so he he got into a first and second grade combo class this year, and it's 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 uh yeah, that's rad. interesting dynamic because there's 20 first graders and 10 second graders. Huh. So um, the first grade parents are all like, oh, you know, my kid's super smart. You know, they have that air about them. And yeah, exactly. But then on the other side of the coin is the second grade parents who hate the class because they feel like their kid is being called stupid for being in the class but i mean let's get down to the facts let's some get down kids to the facts. are freaking stupid let's get down <laughs> to the facts the education system here is abysmal and the best thing you can do is to try to help your kid learn as much as possible when they're at home because school i mean it won't take them very long to be smarter than a teacher right probably by sixth grade they'll be smarter than the teacher right and I mean, as 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 a parent, that's your job, anyways, to teach your kid constantly. And the best thing is when those manipulative kids we were talking about, right. and they learn what, how to attack the teacher oh, psychological, yeah. and those teachers have a meltdown. No, I <laughs> total meltdown because they don't know how to handle it. I think teachers these days are softer than parents. Yeah, but I mean, at the same time, they're not allowed to do any kind of disciplinary and oh, stuff. So true. you got to give. Huh? Spanking and paddling is still legal, mm. but it's just frowned upon. And it's not not here, I don't think, is I it? I think it is. Should we I know it that? is in Florida. <laughs> well, maybe some of these kids should go to but, Florida. Uh, yeah, I got spanked, but never by the teachers. I was the principal. It's got, you get sent to the principal's office. Oh, is that what it is? That's always what it Did was. Did you get spanked? <laughs> Dude, I was in there like continually. I knew the principal by the first name. We just hung out for a while yes. and just chatted like this, like we are right now. And then he's like, okay. We gotta take care of business. <laughs> you know, oh, this is okay. gonna hurt me more than it hurts you. <laughs> yeah. <thing. laughs> so, I never understood that thing. It's gonna hurt me more than it's gonna hurt it's, you. It's a lie to try to make it feel it's, better. It's totally a lie. Yeah. So, so moving on. Okay. What do you got? All right. Um, we have the teacher. This was in the news yesterday, right? No, today. This is um current. Yeah, I think it was yesterday, maybe. But go right, ahead and read the stories it. from today. Uh, the teacher accidentally reveals racy photos of herself to students on the school issued ipad a sc- wait the school's giving people ipads apparently that's my gotta son's be going cheap. to the wrong school <laughs> <laughs> but let's throw more I money at back the school for one of those yeah. yeah um four middle school students in indiana were suspended for finding racy photos of their teacher on a school issued ipad and why would she have photos of her well, naked on the iPad. Here's where it gets tricky. Tricky. Apparently, the teacher took revealing photos of herself on her iPhone. Then, via Apple's iCloud Photo Stream service, the photos ended up on the school's <laughs> iPad, <laughs> which that was linked so to her awesome. iTunes account. She's such a. I don't want to say retard because that would be insulting retarded people. Not smart. <laughs> she. W- is so mentally crippled people. that oh. she accidentally synced the school iPad to her iTunes account. That and that's ridiculous. And then, first of all, so she's taking pictures of herself naked, like probably sending it to her boyfriend or something. Right? That's that's what we're going at. I wonder um, if her boyfriend is like seventeen and in one of her classes. That is the tricky part. 
It seems what to happen a lot. Where where was this story happening? Indiana, so, so it's definitely possible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if it was it's Florida, defi- I'd say for sure. It for sure. Definitely. We don't like Florida today. I don't. I don't. Yeah, but, no, there's a lot of good things about Florida, but they do have some sort of special talent for producing human craziness. <laughs> um, let's see. In case you're not familiar with iCloud or PhotoStream, if you take a photo on one iOS device, like an yeah, iPhone all your devices, or right? iPod Touch, it can appear across iOS devices using that iTunes account. That's awesome. But back to the question is, why is it linked to her school's i? Why would she do she that? She probably ought to, maybe she was trying to like pull up some music or something and just sync to everything. Oh, <laughs> so it gets trickier. So the school explained its decision saying, uh, a teacher gave certain students access to a school-owned iP- iPad, which had been assigned to her. Oh, okay. So, so they're not giving it out to the kids, right? It wasn't. But some kids. schools actually do do that, right? Right. Uh, Redondo Union, they you get a laptop your freshman year, Woo. and I think they you have to give it back when you're a senior. I don't. Uh, I don't think you get a new well, one that's every year. Crazy. But, um, yeah, because you know it. It's really difficult to learn how to Google stuff. It takes four years. Oh, see now a little more of the stories coming out. Um, because yesterday it was saying that they just popped up. And these kids were saying, it's not my fault. I got sus- like, why should I be suspended that the teacher had naked pictures? But uh, the students explored the iPad and went to unauthorized ac- applications, one of it, which was iPhotos. Unbeknownst to the teacher, a picture was on the teacher's personal cell phone, had been stored in iCloud, and therefore streamed to the That sounds fishy. IPad. That sounds fishy. I think it's more now but like why, the, why the school's trying to cover trying to cover themselves up. Dude, the chick yourself. had naked photos of herself on the phone. Which I mean You have naked photos of yourself on your phone? Is that what you can tell me? Quite a few, as a matter of fact. <laughs> that is weird. <laughs> um I don't even have pictures of myself on my phone. Um so yeah, what what is she doing? <laughs> Like, <laughs> that's an if, excellent question <laughs> if you were going to text that to someone wouldn't you go back through and delete it yeah you weren't you telling me you always delete your normal text not even your naked pictures of yourself text right right i mean just my <laughs> random ones t- telling my mom i love her thank you for printing yeah something. i mean uh that is really weird but it's then again i mean preposterous this goes back to saying you know some students get smarter than the teachers. Obviously, this, this is, is a, a great prime example. example of that fact. Oh my goodness! And what is it? What's the whole phenomenon of sexting? What's that all about? I mean, kids are doing it. How how young are they doing it? We're not. Are we talking about like thirteen year old kids? I don't know. I mean, how how many kids? You know, ten year old kids. Have you seen with cell phones? I mean, I don't think uh, I see eight-year-old kids. I see six-year-old kids with cell right, phones. Right, right, like their own personal. But then, when but does the, that the thing that blows me away age start to start wanting to do that? Yeah, and and uh, what are the legal repercussions? I mean, is, is that getting into like child porn? Mm, that's I mean, a good technically question. it is. But what if it's a child's phone? Right. I don't know how that works. Well. I, you know, what I if think they accidentally sync their phone to iCloud? Oh my goodness! Can you imagine? <laughs> and some teacher like, ends up uh, with a <laughs> a ton of child porn on their iPad. Oh my, oh my god! That could be all bad news. But somebody goes to the pan over an accidental click of the button. That that brings up a good point: is what is what is the the um, big? Why do people do it? Why don't they just go over to someone's house and knock one out? Instead of taking... You mean like a 13-year-old kid? Just yeah. go over to somebody's house and take off your clothes? Right. I because mean, it's safer, dude. Hello. They can hide behind the phone. There you go. Is that Just like everybody goes on YouTube and hides behind their anonymous names mm-hmm. and makes mean comments about people. Right, right. And then that brings up the whole bullying thing. Like when we were kids, when I was a kid... We yep. didn't have phones. We yeah, the other thing is what if you st- yeah, what if some bully steals some other kid's phone and then Ooh. sends like naked text to, to all, all con- his yeah. contacts. Exactly. Ooh. Not good. Not good, but I mean that's Kid, Hey kids, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Save yourself a lot of hassle, trouble and right. legal problems. Don't do that. And then, you know, that that brings up the whole bullying on Facebook and like ten year old, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fifteen year old. Yeah, kids what is all that? Okay, th- that's themselves? something I want to talk about because when I was a kid, uh, bullying has probably been gone 
going on since before humans. Since like cavemen. No, before humans. Before <laughs> cavemen, before humans. Be- like primate monkeys get bullied by other right. stronger monkeys. And what do you so, do? You take, so you what take I'm saying is, pole, right? is uh, no monkey has said, I'm going to jump out of this tree and kill myself and break my neck because I'm, I'm feeling bullied. So this is like a new phenomenon for me because everybody got bullied when I was a kid, yeah. but nobody killed themselves over it. I, well, I didn't what, necessarily get bullied because I had two older brothers. So yeah. yeah, so your bullying was all in a family. Right, right, right. <laughs> and, and I knew everybody that was older than me, more or less, and they all knew me, but... Um, but, I, but I mean, like, what's the phenomenon with kids taking their own lives because they're feeling bullied? Like, that's that over escapes some me. Facebook comments or something. Yeah, Delete that, your account, right? I mean, I've seen some pretty horrendous teasing of kids, like that. I felt bad about, like, uh, when I was a kid, this girl just got like super abused by other kids. But I guarantee you, she didn't take her own life. Oh yeah, I I mean, it, how do you decide to do that at thirteen? End your life? Yeah, that's that's pretty rough. That's, that's I mean, pretty radical. I don't know if it's a, a cultural thing with m- movies and stuff like that, but it's and weird how bullying bullying just popped to the forefront when it was n- nobody ever talked about it. You ever. saw it in a movie once in a while about ki- you know yeah. kids movie. When you're a kid, if if someone was being mean to you, you said let's meet at the flagpole at three o'clock or something, right? You just went out and fought them. No. No. no, because when the kid's way bigger than you and they go, give me your lunch money, <laughs> and you just take it and run and cry. Or the or you get pummeled, and then they take it, and then you run and cry. Right. It's a win. This is your two <laughs> lose, lose <laughs> situation. Lose, lose, full lose, lose. Oh, but man. rather lose your mo- lunch money than get pummeled. That, you know, two bucks versus getting a black yeah. eye and, well, my, and a bear's. In my day, is like probably cents. 30 but. cents for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> the fruit cup remember the yeah. fruit cup fruit cups are awesome dude oh i actually God. stayed i st- i stood by the trash can and no, just asked people do you want that do you want that <laughs> i ate like 30 fruit cups in a row so you didn't even pay 30 cents <laughs> nope. for lunch you nope. just ate awesome. fruit cups for it was lunch. awesome dude my mom gave me a brown bag lunch with just all healthy crap in it right which i hated so i <laughs> I was like a mini entrepreneur, and I would trade people carrots for fruit cups and stuff. I would go, hey, you want that? Or like a brownie. I'd be like, hey, I'll trade you these carrots. They're really good for your eyes, for your eyesight. <laughs> and it would work. It was awesome. That's pretty I think I lost my business sense somewhere along the line. I think so. Yeah. We've weird. been reduced to free podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sad. And music, uh, the, the music industry imploding. Oh, my Just goodness. Just like giving away free music. How's that been for you? Oh, uh, it's great. All the kids steal it, and you spend tons of time and, and money putting it together, and, uh, you know, you come out with nothing. It's bitchy. Right. How? I mean, when's the last time you saw a record label sign a band? Do they even do that Yeah, anymore? they sign bands still, yeah. Still? Yeah. But, I mean, a lot of the labels are just taking a total hit. Right. And so that's why they're doing uh, these things called 360 deals where they say, we get a percentage of your record sales, a percentage of your touring, and a percentage of your merchandise. So Wow. Yeah, they catch you coming and going. But the reason is they're trying to make up all this lost revenue from what used to be record sales. Right. But so how does the whole iTunes thing work? Nine ninety nine for the oh, new iTunes CD. takes I, I think what do they take? Like thirty cents out of a dollar or something like that? Out of Apple every dollar? Does? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So and then you know, you and then if you're spitting that with the label or whatever, you're getting hammered. Right. So what? W- let's say the budget for one of the last records you worked on. What was the budget? Hundred thousand. Oh my goodness. They'll never recoup in a million years. Never. How yeah. are they? What? I have no idea. They're crazy. They're Italians, and the craziest <laughs> of all Italians is they're from Naples. I don't know if anybody out there is Italian, but the craziest Italians, any Italian will tell you, is from Naples. Really? Yeah. I don't know that. It's many. like a lawless Wild West kind of vibe. I could think I want to go there. Yeah, it's pretty badass. The, wow. Actually, that's where Pompeii is. If you ever end up going to Pompeii, okay, that it's right outside of Naples. Okay. When's the last time you were there? Um, two years ago. I thought you were. It was more recent. Oh no, that was Prague. You were just in. Yeah, Prague. Right. Man, a hundred grand, and they'll. Yeah, they'll never make that money. No though. wonder they're taking percentage of touring. And but I mean, that's a, that's a rarity, you know. Most most bands aren't getting a hundred grand. It, you know, some of the smaller indie bands might be getting twenty or thirty grand. Real small indie bands are getting like ten grand or five grand even to do a record. So I mean, they spend weeks in the studio to make a record, 
and who knows how long the writing process is coming up, you know, right. before they enter the studio. Right. And the studio, you know, a microphone can cost four grand or five grand or eight grand. So Easily. all the equipment in the studio is really expensive. And then you put the record together and then it costs like thousands of dollars to master it. And then you press it up, which is thousands, and then you put it out, and then people go, cool, I'm going to just put this on peer-to-peer. <laughs> it's a travesty. It's brutal. Yeah, it's a travesty. How? Let's not talk about music anymore because it's just depressing. <laughs> it's just depressing. I could only imagine. What's your next story? So, Andy, I got one for you. All right. So, this is in England. It says, uh, Bemuse Trevor Hames, 37, and Son Zach. They just finished their weekly shop at Asda in Somerset when they went to buy Lucky Dip tickets at the kiosk. I guess this is like some kind of lottery okay. ticket or th- okay. something. Zach then stepped forward and asked for tickets, but the cashier turned him down on grounds of his age. I don't know. Maybe there, maybe you have to be like 18 to buy it. Is that, it? Is that how lottery tickets are here? Yeah. Yeah, so whatever. That's cool. So the, the, the dad was denied? Or no, the no, that's the kid. But then okay. it says... Okay. Then Trevor, who is a dad, then tried to buy him, and he was also turned down because he could ha- just hand him straight to Zach and encourage him to gamble. Trevor is so furious that he handed the entire 50-pound trolley of good. So I guess 50 pounds is in dollars. I don't know. It's like $75 or something like that. It's probably like that. more than that, right? I don't know. Who knows? And then uh, don't we don't care because right. we're in America. Right. And then a Definitely. trolley would be like a shopping cart. Okay. <laughs> whatever of goods and demanded a refund and uh he was pissed he said initially i thought they were joking but when they said they couldn't serve me the woman said i was teaching my son to gamble so i mean my question is this right now if we went to the liquor store if you went to the liquor store and bought lottery tickets you can take them home and have your kid scratch them off it's your business right? right right So if you walked in with your kid, can they refuse you lottery tickets and say you might possibly give those to your kid? No, I don't think they could. But I think what what they're going with is the kid tried to buy them first. So they're saying that they would be directly responsible because they knowing the kid tried to buy them. And then two seconds later, the dad said, never mind, I'll buy them. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, It'd I be mean, like, because if a kid said, hey, can I have a beer? And you said, no. Right. right. <laughs> and, and then your dad said, can I have that exact same beer? Or like some random guy says, you know what, that kid, you know, I'll, I'll buy him a beer or something. So it's, it's. I mean, that's going on to telling some parent what he can and can't do, though, right? I mean. Yeah, but I mean, uh, I see your point because if the guy is, uh, if the kid originally tried to buy it, I think that's where you're screwed. Right. So right. learn well, your lesson, Dad. You buy it first. If you, <laughs> you buy it first, <laughs> if you're banking on scratchers, that's a problem in the first place. Dude, scratchers being your IRA is a bad plan. Is a is should never be plan A, B, or C. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I mean, m- make sure everything's cool financially. And you have a backup plan. And then if you want to buy scratchers, like, randomly, just in case you enhance it. Right. So it, cool. But on the... Uh, but you probably make more money collecting cans. Pro- I mean, you'll make money, actually. Over your lifetime. You know, versus spending five bucks to lose. Right. Which brings up another interesting topic is uh, my boss, who should go unnamed, maybe. You working now? <laughs> but um, when I do... Um, my boss, we, we might have to have an intervention with him. Um, for, by, uh, uh, is he drinking? No. Gambling? Yes. You caught him in Vegas with a bevy of hookers. Uh, well, that, I, if I did, I mean, I wouldn't. I would just, you know, it stays in Vegas. But um, so I, w- I went to his truck. We were out at a job site on uh, Wednesday. Went to his truck to grab a pen out of his, uh, his center console. No joke. A hundred scratched lottery tickets. A hundred? A <laughs> hundred scratched Well, maybe he just doesn't throw them away for like a year. <laughs> no, and then I confronted him about it. And well, some uh, people have a problem. You know, my friend Todd, he was in uh, a casino, not in Vegas, but like a casino around Gardena, I think. Right. And uh, you can't, they don't, in Gardena, you can play uh, cards and stuff, but you can't, they don't have one arm bandits or anything like that. Right. Right. It's only certain games they have. They don't have poker, I think. But um, 
No, they this have is, poker. This is bad when this is bad when uh, the dealer gives you a Gamblers Anonymous card. Yeah, that's when you know you're in bad shape. That's <laughs> he's like, dude, you went to the forty percent <laughs> interest ATM machine <laughs> six times. 40%. <laughs> that must be the same one they have in strip clubs, dude. It's like you just dropped. You want ten bucks? It's gonna cost you seven. <laughs> you just dropped a thousand dollars in eight minutes. Here's a card. Um, so, I actually could, I di- and I did confront um, your boss, said named your, your person, your sometime boss. Yeah, who uh, I think you know who I'm talking about. And I asked him, "Do you have a scratcher problem?" Oh my goodness! I just realized who you're talking. Yeah, about. and I was like, I said, you know, kind of jokingly, but semi seriously, I said. Uh, are, are, are we going to need to do an intervention on you? And he kind of laughed because it was kind of funny. But it was it that nervous laugh? Yeah. <laughs> and like, I've heard that before. I'm working type thing. Like, so um, I was trying to figure out if he keeps him in his work truck so that his wife doesn't know the problem. Right. Because, I mean, you, if you, I mean, if I was, yeah, yeah. Then, She's not going to go search his work truck. Right. Yeah. And I mean, well, you know, maybe not a hundred scratch scratchers, but pretty darn close and i asked him what how what's that time period like a week and he said oh maybe two. Oh and my god and they're like the black gold that's ones 14 like, days that's like buying 10 a day almost <laughs> and it's like they're like it's all the seven and five dollar ones no dollar scratchers they're all the the expensive ones wow like, first of all you make way too much money i mean that's that's 10 <laughs> that's 10 a day because uh he's not driving his work truck on the weekends right that's right so wow might have to call him up here in a minute. Yeah, Mr. G, you better settle down. <laughs> Mr. That. G. So how about this one? Um, we got in um, yesterday. Uh, where's this kid from? Doesn't, well, we'll get to there. Oh, Iowa. Iowa, another fantastic state. It's, um, it's a cool state. I don't know. Especially if you like corn. Well. I like corn. You know what I like about corn? You can eat it twice. <laughs> That's disgusting. That's why dude. I never eat corn. <laughs> Edit. Edit. <laughs> Rewind, erase. Um, a mother in Iowa was left outraged after she says her nine year old son's music teacher instructed his schoolmates to spit on him in class last week. <laughs> that, <laughs> you must is, have played really terribly. This is awesome. Like, Actually, you know what? That you could were be flat a great. On that note. <laughs> yeah, that, that could be a great. Uh, that could be like an American Idol kind of show. It, that they have bands play, and if they're really insanely terrible, you spit on them. You spit on them. But you know, isn't it uh, like aren't aren't the UK guys like punks? Don't they uh, consider that sort of like you're you're really good? What's when that? Punk rock bands play in the UK, and then they spit on them. Uh, you know, I never got that. That that's just gross because but don't they do that over there? Yeah. Like they hey, do it we like there. you, so we're gonna cover you and spit. Well, a certain band, uh, Gutter Mouth. You know, they they had they... that whole thing where people were spitting on him. Oh, man. That's and um, Mark, their singer, had a cut on his knee on the Warp Tour. Uh-huh. And someone spit on him. And the next day, the cut went from one inch to, like, three inches big. He oh. Ended, he ended up going to the hospital. He had flesh-eating disease. Oh, my God. <laughs> he almost <laughs> lost his leg, dude. That's awesome. So now, like, it's – I mean, this was almost 10 years ago. People still spit on him, and he gets furious. And I'm like, well, you kind of – it's your fault. Why would you want people to spit on you? Why would you think that's funny? Yeah, he once you once you initiate that kind of mentality, you can't stop if it. If you accept you let the it cat once, out of the bag. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, uh, uh, Don Dawkins told me one time he's on stage. I think it was in in England, and uh, people were spitting on him just because they thought that was cool. And then he <laughs> looked over at his bass player. He had, he's playing with his mouth open with a rock, total rock face, you know? <laughs> and he just watched the loogie go right in the dude's mouth. What oh, would you do? <laughs> That's nasty. Oh, my. Uh, do you just pretend it didn't happen and keep going? <laughs> <laughs> so I can gross. imagine the next face is not oh. at all a rock face. <laughs> I would say it is not a rock face. Um, but I mean, what? Like, tell us a little more about that story. That's that seems there's got to be more to it. That's crazy. Whoa. Okay. So it says um, Jackson Kindup told uh, this TV station that he'd been sticking out his tongue and blowing raspberries at a classmate 
when his music teacher confronted him, my music ah. teacher asked me how I would like it if someone did that to me. Uh-huh. Everyone gathered around me. I knew there was more to the she story. she said, ladies and gentlemen, spit away. Whoa. Whoa. Like that it. is heavy. That's a pretty heavy teacher. But I mean, I mean, come she on. She should that, get an award. Yeah, but there's no way she's not getting away with that. That's going to be, she's going to be severely reprimanded. Uh, well, it's, let's see. If someone does this, this is, um, if someone does this, what else are people capable of? His mom wondered aloud, referring to the teacher. If she's going to snap over something that minuscule, what's she going to do if something else happens? Jackson said the lone student who did not spit on him was blah, 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 blah. According to a post on Facebook page, the teacher had admitted that making students spit on her son was an error in judgment, but did not apologize. Of course not. Wow. So what do they do with her? Uh, the safety and well-being of students. This is the principal speaking now. The safety and well-being of students. These is our highest priority. District's first priority. <laughs> yeah, they always say that. Takes all claims of bullying and harassment seriously. Investigates all complaints. On Friday, the superintendent told the Daily Mail. Bottom line, that teacher is going to get the hammer brought down on her. She's been placed on paid leave pending an investigation. There you go. End the story. That's all you need to know. Bye. Yep. Never teaching again. But I think they probably can't fire her. I mean, these days it's like insanely hard to fire a teacher, right? Teachers union. That's that whole Prop 32 in California. Yeah, so I mean, you know, you got to... uh, She'll probably be on, on leave, so she'll be getting paid the same amount of money just to kick back and watch Netflix. Yeah, her, her pension's probably good, so she's just going to hang. Um, all right. What else do you got? Hey, baby. Okay, so what, do you got, what do you got next? All right. Um, here is a definitely uh, newsworthy. Uh, Sandra Bullock beams while cradling her son, Lewis as they enjoy a relaxing stroll. This actually makes it to the papers. What is it? Just a stroll? That's all they're talking about? Taking a break from her work commitment, Sandra Bullock has been spending time with her what number one What paper is man. this you're reading? This is your paper, Mail, Daily Mail. Oh, it's an English paper, that's why. Pictured on Thursday. There must not be much happening in England, just like an international crisis. Right. Uh, this this is a picture of her in Beverly Hills. And why are they talking about Sandra Bullock? She's not even an English actress. Um, well, you know, she got real popular over Over a few movies that she made. But, I mean, here's the thing. Was she playing Margaret Thatcher or something? I guess. I mean, was The Blind Side really that good? Anyways, um, what is the deal with adopting black (laughs) babies? Not that I am. You mean, are you talking about babies from Africa? Is that what you're trying to say? That's what I mean. In your own, like, little mentally crippled way. (laughs) So, uh, that is something, you know, that is something. Like, who started that? Was that Madonna who started that? Was it Madonna or or maybe Angelina? Maybe they're competing for that top spot. Yeah, I can't remember who came first. It's like chicken and egg kind of thing. But, But, I mean, it seemed to be something that, I think the you know we talked about the merits of adoption and how we give props to people who adopt but right. the fact that in celebrity circles it's become like an accessory like a Louis Vuitton purse it's to have an african repulsive. baby yeah that's that's weird why i mean why is that like and does you know, it show that you're not racist that you're that compassionate no i think what people? it shows is that you uh are trying to help Africa. But I think if those people set aside money and started some organization to fight poverty in Africa, it'd be way more effective than higher than like adopting one single African baby. And it's the good looking kid, you know, I, I adopt an ugly one. Well, Show I, I, that, don't, I, ne- I don't, I don't like examine the kid photos, but I mean, <laughs> well. I think the idea behind it is, is kind of like, it's self-serving. I think, it, I mean, maybe maybe it's just they are racist and they're trying to convince themselves that they're not. You know, there's other guys like, like uh, I got to give some props to Matt Damon because he has a, uh, a charity that builds wells in Africa. Right, right. And wasn't he the first one on the ground in Haiti bringing water to them after the earthquake? Or I don't know. First it might have been Sean Penn. It's one of those, yeah, I mean, I think it might have been Sean Penn because that was at a, I think he went over associated with uh, 
Wycliffe's charity, which has turned into a disaster of titanic proportions. Well, look who started it. And now he's persona non grata over there, which is pretty amazing. Right. He went from running for president to getting shot. Wait, That's Wycliffe? That's pretty big. <laughs> yeah. What, he ran for president? Yeah, yeah. When was this? Well, uh, a little while after that earthquake. <laughs> president of Haiti? Yeah. And then they shot him for it? I call it <laughs> hating. <laughs> Haiti. Well, you know, that's kind of... Yeah, but you're, I mean, you're hating. You know, uh, I mean, I'm not a huge Sean Penn fan, but that guy has been on the ground over there from the get go, and his charity takes, I think, 10 percent is administration fees, and uh, Wycliffe's was like 50 percent. Oh yeah, that's so when you know they're crooked. That's when you know you go, hey, you know, I'm doing a lot of work here, so I want to get paid really well, really well, because my music sucks. But going back to Matt Damon, he is a uh, He's digging wells for, in, in uh, villages and rural villages in Africa where they don't have clean water to drink, which spreads massive disease and all right, kinds of problems. Right. Or they got to hike. And uh, that's the kind of thing I think where you can a celebrity could put their money to good use that, that benefits a group of people rather than one individual kid. Right. Right. And then what happens when you you know you. You're a celebrity. You adopt an African baby, and then they turn out to be a spoiled little brat and get all hooked up on, on uh, Oxycontin right. and go to jail for drunk driving, Lindsay Lohan. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, it's just, are you, are you really helping or are you just creating another problem? Right, exactly. I mean, you know kids from Malibu, There's there are tons of actors, sons, and daughters that are all jacked up. That They just have the license to be a retard because don't you know who my dad is? Yeah, and we're not... We're not uh, we're mom. not trying to rip on retards. He meant to say mentally crippled. <laughs> mentally crippled. So how about this? Um, what is it? Face. I don't even think we're supposed to say dogs. retards. <laughs> like I don't think we're supposed to say we're not trying to rip on retards. I think we're not supposed the to SEC use that phrase shut at all. Us down. <laughs> so we episode you know one, what we, we got to change people. our name. You know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> what how is this i mean this is pretty interesting uh people are just now finding out that apparently there's a story that um dogs licking your face oh. spreads disease people are just now finding this out yeah i love that because uh you know you see some girl going give me kisses oh give me kisses and then the dog's licking them all over the mouth and up in the nostril and stuff so disgusting and, and I then think she wants you to kiss her because you're a boyfriend or something Ugh. Yeah, I think it's great. Those so basically, those girls are gonna get like Ebola or uh, bubonic plague or something. Mm. It's killer. I th I think they deserve it though because here's this. W there's another phenomena. Our favorite word of the day. Two points. Um, the whole like I have a actually, dog, so that actually, means I'm a good parent type. Actually, thing? I think it's phenomenon is one. Right. So go ahead. So since we're on phenomena number two. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> um, what's up with um, women and animals? Single girls, women, young ladies, early twenties, are is this proving their independence that they? Dude, own it's another purse. Animals? It's another Louis Vuitton purse. Oh it's a fashion accessory. But you know what? That doesn't bother me nearly. That does bother me a little bit. But what bothers me way more is some douchebag guy at the beach who just got out of the gym, went home to get his little chihuahua so he can walk it on the beach so oh my totally yoked up dude with the little tiny chihuahua obviously I mean, not from around here you might as well put a pink bow in it uh. <laughs> dude you can't be less manly than being a buffed out dude walking a chihuahua it's so lame it's yeah. like i'm trolling for chicks check me out but, and what you can't even pretend that that's your girlfriend's dog because no man would even walk that dog <laughs> Well, <laughs> sometimes your chick forces you to do shit no. like that. Walk a totally insignificant, stupid little dog. I think you get more chicks walking a turtle. He, I think you get beach. more chicks walking a kid. <laughs> <laughs> I know you know about that. I, I wouldn't know. I've heard. <laughs> I've heard you can play football. and, Anyways, um, yeah, this dog thing is driving me nuts. I don't. I don't like I it. I mean, where do you see that? Are you talking about Everywhere. over at the beach and stuff? Yeah, just in general. Yeah, I, I mean, see that all the time. Like, I'm this. But the five thing foot that you know what's really and bugs me. Two hundred pound dog. The thing that bugs me is, uh, I don't know how you feel about this, but when I'm in the eating establishment, 
I don't want to see someone cruising with a dog. Yeah, I'm I'm not sure how I feel about that. Seeing no, I'm a seeing a eye dog, dog is cool. Yeah, I'm talking totally. about a purse dog. Or a, yeah. you know the Paris Hilton purse dog. Yeah, what is I that? I don't want to I don't want to have what? a dog like in my face around my food. People can't even let their hair down around food. They shouldn't have a dog yeah. around food. And and then you want me to like be okay with m- eating food right next to this thing? Yeah, that's no. weird. Um, I don't I mean, the whole thing with pets in general, I think people are getting out of control. And it's like, you you know, I think some couples use it as a test run for a baby. I guess that's cool. But it's too many people are using, are are going, oh. I have an idea. I want a pet for a fashion. Buy a plant. Plants are great. Plants are amazing. Plants are great. I hate that word. You know what's cool is uh, when you see guys have plants and they're all like dead. That's when you then know. Then you know they're single. He's quality. <laughs> <laughs> He's a keeper. <laughs> then you know they're single. He can't all, put all, water any, in a plant. Any dude with a girlfriend, the plants are going to be cranking. And he, if he can't put water in a plant, I mean, what? That, how that hard is, is that? No, this is beyond inept. And then you expect him to marry you and be a good dude. Yeah. He cannot remember to put water in a plant. But most, I think most chicks aren't looking for that. They're just looking for, you, you know, like tattoos and cigarettes. Well, I'm right here. <laughs> there you go oh man top of the barrel top you know it's like hey so i got one for you dude uh <laughs> is this gonna be a this shocker this is a, this is another uk thing i don't know what their their obsession with american celebrities is kind of trippy but american obsession with american celebrities that, is yeah but trippy. but um sorry go on britney spears the name is well known to everybody. This is her manager, I guess ex manager, saying she was addicted to amphetamines and shaved her head to make to hide evidence of her drug taking. This is her ex manager Sam Luff Lefty claimed in court. In court. Yeah, it says the superstar singer made headlines around the world when she took a razor to her head in a Los Angeles salon in two thousand seven. I think you remember that. Yep. Uh Lutfi, sorry I said his name wrong, was, who was suing the Spears family for defamation and breach of contract at L.A. Superior Court, claims the star was a regular drug user and cut off her hair because she feared it contained traces of illegal substances. I love it. I wonder if they swept it up and kept it in a bag. Ooh. He told the court Britney, Spe- Britney feared that she was going to be a going to be drug tested by the judge presiding over a custody battle with K fed. There's an interesting choice in wow, fathers. Wow, that is heavy, man. Those two should just, first of all, never have been allowed to have kids. I check this out. This says the jury also heard how the singer regularly popped more than 50, more than 30 prescription amphetamine pills a day. What's prescription amphetamine? That's you would know. No, well, easy. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? I was never a prescription amphetamine. Oh, guy. You're you're the downer boy. Yes. Um so whatever what, what that is. What would that be? Like diet pills? Mm, Actually, maybe. Or yeah. maybe like Adderall or something cuz that's like I don't know. This says uh she overdosed on him in July and January 2008. That's pretty awesome. And so she suffered this... a second breakdown and was placed in psychiatric care. I mean, is any of this really a big surprise? Well, I um, this is this goes back to my thing about like the the child star phenomenon where you have everybody from where you have Brittany, you have Dana Plato, which is a total tragedy. And then, uh, Gary Coleman. Oh man. It's almost, it's almost like there's no exceptions to that rule. It's almost like every child star is a complete F up. How many made it out? Scott Bale. We don't know his personal life. We we don't, but he seems to be doing all right. Yeah. He, uh, Ch- he's supposed like, to be low, but Joni is jacked. Right. Joni is out of a freaking gourd. Right. You know who else is? Um, maybe you just named her name. I don't know her name. Donna from. Um, yeah. Is that a different strokes chick? No, she is definitely. Which but uh, the one from that Ashton Kutcher, the '70s show, oh, the hot really? blonde sister. Oh yeah, I just that's right. Mug really? shot the yeah. other day. She looks like she's 60, been hitting the pipe. Not good. Not, Not good. Good. And I mean. What is the deal with that? Just too I, I much think money, it's too min- much? Yeah, I think it's, you know, when you're, well, they don't actually, I think the money goes into a trust till they're 18, but what happens is uh, these kids are on the set, they don't have to go to school, they're, ho- they're school, they're tutored on the set, so if you have like a recurring show. Right. So, I mean, 
you don't interact with other kids. You're interac- interacting with adults, so that's got to be weird. And then everything you want is given to you. Right. All You're the, the time. You're the star. You're the yeah, star. all the time. So, I mean, Where's it's got to mess up your head. Where's yeah, the there's discipline? zero discipline because everybody's like, as long as they're happy, the show's going to go well. So, we're making money. We don't want to upset right. the golden goose. So, so here's here's another one. How many? Uh, how long? We're taking bets here. How long till we start reading more of these about? Oh, what's her name? Uh, Miley Cyrus. Who knows? Not I mean, long. hopefully your dad is like, you know, keeping her in check since he's gone through the stardom thing him, himself. But I think it's kind of awesome that he's riding her coattails now. <laughs> yeah, say. that's like, awesome. That's pretty that's role reversal. It's funny. Yeah. Um, but I mean. She's already had some, you know, maybe not super. Not anything crazy. Deal. I think right. she had like a little Michael Phelps moment, right? Right, right, right. Which, a little hit I in mean, the bong. Yeah. <laughs> but, hey, I, mean, I that, mean, that's way mellow compared to 30 amphetamine pills. If the guy can swim like that, he needs, he deserves to hit the bong. Yeah. Let him, let him do what the hell he wants on his off time. <laughs> that's right. He's winning us gold medals. He was just named most fit person in the world. Really? Yeah. I did not hear that. So, Brittany, poor disaster of a person. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, this this is also the whole thing. Another and her sister, problem I remember have. her sister? Pregnant well, at 12 or something? That's awesome. <laughs> my, my problem is we have this fascination with train wrecks, so we enable and, and encourage them. Right. Aren't we basically paying their salary by... I mean, talking about I this mean, right Brittany, now? I mean, Britney Spears, Lindsay Lohan, that, that whole deal, all those chicks are just like a disaster and they need intervention but it'll never happen because that way uh you know the daily mail will lose a story right you know who's uh pretty much disappeared is uh your girl paris hilton we haven't heard about her my and, girl I yeah, like that. <laughs> yeah she she started she, she randomly around, behaving right? herself but i think what happened was, was they the said we're time? gonna cut off your money if you don't shape up yeah I would there's, be there's I would be, be the model of behavior. <laughs> <laughs> the, if I was the heir of the Hilton, I, you know, though, when mom and dad go, boom, it's game on. I, is it is it a grandfather that she has to suck up to right now? I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, but she she definitely disappeared over the last however many years. Yeah. Right after jail, she <laughs> got out and just it happens that way for went some people. Underground. Not for Lindsay, but for some other people. Lindsay. Yeah. Tighten it up. <laughs> that was like a little team, right? An LA club team. It was Lindsay, Brittany, and Paris. And uh, what's her name? Lionel Richie's daughter. Oh yeah, Nicole. Nicole. Huh? Now she's got some puppies and a steady man. So really? Yeah. I mean, puppies. I mean, kids. Yeah. Same thing. Um, same thing. <laughs> puppies are trial kids. That's right. So, uh, who? What's? What's? Uh, she's just laying low. She, I, Maybe I, she's influencing Paris to uh, settle that. You know not go all crazy maybe she is sometimes when people lose their partner in crime they kind of mellow out yeah you know and or uh, you know one there's obviously that but then the the partner in crime goes solo and just flushes the toilet down you know he goes haywire <laughs> yeah. becomes even more of a train wreck i've seen that <laughs> <laughs> i mean i think we're only a matter of time from a reality show where it's like who could be the biggest train wreck I, I hate reality, but I would watch that. Yeah. That just sounds funny. I don't think it'd be better than Duck Dynasty, but Duck it'd be pretty Dynasty. funny. <laughs> Those guys, they're doing something, right? Yeah, they're making duck calls, right? I think so. Millions uh, of dollars. Is the worth. ATF going to show up to their house? Never. Because <laughs> they're making money. It goes back to they're making money for a lot of people. That's what it's all about, dude. I want to see those guys on Fox News talking about being taxed by our i don't think that'll happen (laughs) they're gonna (laughs) they're gonna keep that low they don't want to pull hank williams jr oh man lose the gig man oh man all right so i think that's about it we covered uh, a lot of stuff first run podcast pretty good thanks for joining us thanks for joining us and uh we'll be back in about a week if we can get andy to get off his couch i will be off the couch but i will be on the north shore so it will be in about a week and a half. Oh, you're going next week over there? Yeah, Monday. Ah. Monday. Catch some sun. Try not to get... Uh, Maybe some shave ice. Try not <laughs> to get uh, attacked by a shark or a stingray. Ugh. Why do you and have to And don't say grab that? onto any turtles. You know, I, I'm not... 
I'm not scared of flying, but I've really psyched myself out this time. I haven't flown in a few years, and uh, I, I definitely flying. haven't been to Hawaii since I was in eighth grade. I but love flying as long as there's no screening baby for the entire right. trip. That's a long flight over some pretty open water. I mean, yeah, I've done that flight like a hundred times, right? Right. Just, what just happens if the plane goes down? It's just game 100 over. A hundred times you're doing it once. Game over. I, it, with my luck, I'll be the one time the plane goes down. Well, I'll just get another podcast guy. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> All right. We're out. Thanks for listening in. All right.